Can you hear me? Yes. That's amazing. Okay, so, so uh, today we're going to talk about plugging API, and it's by examples. Um, I'm Gabby, or Gambry in Drupal.org, or Gabriele, which is my name. I've been a PHP developer for uh, too long, actually. Um, Drupal developer for almost 10 years, and I'm the lead Drupal developer uh, and manifesto. I like Drupal, like PHP and JavaScript. Uh, currently, I'm playing with chatbots and encryption with Drupal mainly. and. I'm currently watching Altered Carbon, it's a TV series, so uh, I like it, and it was really, um, I mean, it excites me, so I put it on my slide because I think it deserved uh, a mention. So again, today we're going to talk about um, plugin API by examples. Um, I don't like examples, uh, I don't like to go on Stack Overflow and copy and pasting, so, um, because I think it's the best way to not be a good developer. Um, so the examples that I'm giving you, they should be a spark of curiosity, and then you go back and check the code and check my slides and check other people's slides and other people's uh, articles. Um, um, so you can make the topic your own. So don't copy and paste, okay? I, I repeat it. Um, fine, everybody, uh, is there no Drupal developers in here or someone that doesn't know Drupal at all? No, fine, cool. So you you should know what entity is. Um, every all the all the session will be by will be full of examples, right? So everything will be an example. What could be an example of an entity? An entity is, a, is something that's like a same model, just with different data. An article or two articles, they're the same model, right? With a title, with a body. We just place different data, but the model is the same and it's stacked. Um, and one example with the origami bit is we have a shape, which is, for example, a butterfly. We have different paper of different colors um, and, and pattern to build the same model, so to build the same butterflies. We can have a lot of butterflies um, with different colors, but we'll be again the same model and the same different data. In your project, um, an entity again is your article and is not shareable between projects. You don't have the same article in different projects. It's, it's the model itself is not shared across projects. You can have the articles in all the projects, but all of them, they will have a different bit, so it's not easily uh, shareable. What plugins are then? Um, so, Plugins are the same thing type in different ways. Taking the origami example, um, it's we want to make a, a um, animal shape with origami, right? So it's the same thing as an origami uh, animal, but it's in different ways. We can have a, a elephant, we can have a lion, we can have a, a, a giraffe. Um, the concept is the same. At the end of the of the end of the work of the process would be an animal made of paper. But the process to reach this final result is different. To make a line is a different process than to make an elephant. It's completely different. But the output that we have is the same. Um, so it's it's uh, if we should compare on on uh, with the entity, um, it's. Um, shareable between projects because it's the same thing type. So we can have uh, an, an art um, uh, competition and we have, uh, we can use the same origami. I can take this presentation and, and do the same in, in different presentation. So the plugin itself is reusable. You can change a few bits, but it's things that you can reuse um, in your project. Um, if we start again with examples, let's take some Plugin types examples in, in Drupal core. Um, field formatters, field widget, field block. You probably know the fields are plugins. In reality, it's not the field that is a plugin. It's the field components that are plugin. Blocks are plugin. Migration source are plugin. So let's try to understand what the concept that we explained in the slide before uh, apply to the Drupal core plugins. So it's the same thing type in different ways. Field formatters are form elements to get the 
values input, right? It's a form element. How many form elements do we have? A lot of them. It's a drop down, it's a checkbox. Uh, and the complexity for the browser to render it or for you to build it is different. But at the end of the way, so it's a different way to build a form element. But at the end of the way, it's a form element, right? You, gather, you, you get the data, it's the same form element. Field widgets, again, uh, field widgets are HTML elements, normally, um, to output the value of your, of your field. Same thing in different ways. The same thing because it's an HTML element, but how can you render an HTML element? In a lot of ways, it can be just a plain text, or it can be a dynamic thing. There can be a bit of JavaScript somewhere, right? You still, it's the same thing showing a value, but the way you show it is different. Uh, block is another example. I mean, uh, is block are HTML blocks, right, to do anything. Uh, how many blocks you have in Drupal? A lot of them. The, the complexity, the logic of printing a block in core is, this is my logic, and then build the block. This is, this is what a plugin block type is. It's just do something and build the block. Um, Migration source is a really good example to explain plugin. Uh, so, how many migration sources are plugin to, you know, what migration is, is to migrate data, right? The source is from where and how you can get the data a database, a file, a remote service, uh, an image, whatever you can think about. So, you can get the data from so many sources. It's like, it's like, um, um, uh, it's an infinite list that you can build, but it's the same thing, right? So it's a CSV, read the first line, and then the other line, and the other line is comma separated. It's a database, select this table, and then the next row, and the next row. So the output is the same. It's the same thing type. It's a list of data. The input for the source plugin, it can be anything. It can be anything. Um, destination is the same, just with destination. The destination can be, again, a database, a file, a CSV, an image. Uh, and, and the plugin is just, the output is the same, but the input from where it comes, sorry, the other way around. The, the input is the same, it's coming a bit of data. The destination can be anything. So it's the same thing type in different ways. Um, Let's start with the example of the, uh, of the demo today. A client comes and says, look, I had a brilliant idea. Can you make a website like TripAdvisor when it's just a simple form where the user type uh, the city and then we load all the information about this city? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's cool, it's cool, this project. Um, what's your budget? Well, it's 200 pounds. Uh, yeah, I cannot build TripAdvisor with 200 pounds, but maybe, you know, if we work like in a couple of years in my spare time. No, no, no actually, a deadline is yesterday. So this guy wants a website like TripAdvisor in a day. And you would say, yeah, that's impossible. It's not, it's not. Plugin API will help us. So this is our, uh, is, is it there? It's not like even taking the laser. Um, so this is the output that the, the, the client wants, right? Say, so, why in why not day? Well, how can we do it? And then the client says, you know, I want these two items for now, weather, cast, and forecast, and restaurants. But we can add more, like kids, like my developers are really happy. You build a thing, and then they can add something like pulling hotels, or cool stuff to do in the city, or, or the number of, of the habitants. So you say, you want so many things. I said, yeah, but it's the same type, right? It's about, it's about outputting information from the city. And you say, yeah, plugin API, they can help me. So let's see how a plugin uh, um, is made. The first thing that you have to identify, identify is the plugin type. Uh, let's call our plugin type a city widget, right? So our website, our page, will be made of city widgets of our project. A city widget um, is a um, plugin that needs to receive a city name as argument and has to build a widget about the information about the city. So the plugin, the same thing is the plugin gets a city name and outputs some HTML code. The logic inside, it depends by the implementation that we want to make. Uh, a plugin type, a plugin itself is normally a uh, object uh, in object oriented programming. So all the Drupal 8 code base is now finally um, uh, uh, object oriented. So uh, a plugin type is an object. Normally a plugin type 
it's predefined by an interface. Everybody confident with the definition interface? So if someone is not confident with the definition interface, don't be shy. Cool, perfect. So an interface is quickly, it's just, you know, a promise, a protocol, something that is the base of our plugin. Our plugin will, they must have these as like manifesto, the definition. Our interface, hey, look, your plugin is to build, to have this method, build widgets. The method argument is the city name, and then the output is a renderable array, for example. So the output will be rendered as a, as a HTML. The logic inside is up to you. Uh, so this is the, this we defined our plugin type, and our plugin type is, uh, sorry, I have just, just the information, so you build the widget from the city. Um, uh, our plugin type is, um, is the base definition. We, 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 we know what it is, right? it's a city widget. Now let's start all the process. Um, to load plugin, you need a plugin manager. The plugin manager is a service, Drupal 8 is full of services. Uh, it's a service which is responsible for defining how to find your plugins, how to um, um, find plugins on, um, this is the next one, find your plugins, instantiate your plugins, uh, and you can manage anything about your plugin type. So basically it's the manager that says, set the rules. Uh, you can get your plugins in this way, you can get this amount of plugins, you, can, you will get loaded in this way, you will get instantiated in this way, you can do this, you can do that. So this will be like, like this guy, like the manager of your uh, mini project about city widgets. So this is the plugin manager. Now, the plugin manager has a few friends, which is Discovery and the Factory. Um, the Discovery bit, is again, this is all of these are, are um, piece of code in your project. Plugin manager is a service, it's an object oriented piece of code that defines uh, ways of loading and rules of uh, using your plugins. The discovery is something that is used by the plugin manager and it finds your city widget plugins in the code base where they are, if they are in the code base. And it finds derivatives, I can't say this in English, so sorry, derivatives, which are normally plugins, normally plugins are piece of code in your code base, so one object is one plugin normally, but there are ways where you can load thousands of, of plugins dynamically on runtime on Drupal, we will see it in, in a minute. Um, and then uh, there are ways to do the discovery. The one that we are going to use and the one the most common use in Drupal core is by annotation, which is a bit of code in the doc block of your uh, plugin class. There are other methods like YAML or the old one, which is uh, now, it was used for legacy reason, now it will be removed, which is the hook. It can be discovery plugin by um, static way, so it, it, nobody can define plugin, I just those ones. Or you can be your own. My plugin, they are on uh, AWS instance, so you, you have to discover them in a completely different way. This is a discovery. And then we have the factory. So when the plugin is discovered, what Drupal knows is just its ID. So we have five city widgets plugin. We have two city widgets plugin. One is restaurant, one is forecast, just all the names. The factor is the one that loads the class, does all the magic, and then the object is ready for Drupal to be used. It's not something new, it's a PHP factory pattern. It's lazy loaded, so at the beginning we just know the ID, and then when we need a plugin, we load the plugin. This is to uh, avoid uh, memory uh, consumption. Consumption is consumption, consumed. Um, so uh, it's loaded in memory only when it's needed. And there are different ways of loading a plugin through the factory. The default factory, the one that is most common is you, uh, we are going to use is the container factory, which is basically, it's a, a container aware plugin. So you can use the create if someone is confident with dependency injection. You can use the create um, method, static method to construct your um, if you if to uh, inject any dependency on your plugin. A lot of information, a lot of information, and you say, well, well the guy is doing a basic knowledge uh, session about plugin, and 
And I'm really confused. I have to be so many, so I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm going to go home. I'm going to swear against the guy. Um, Drupal call helps you. Uh, can you see it? Is, is it visible? So I'm using the Drupal console to help me to build my, my uh, city widget project. First, I'm building a module. So your plugins are part of your module. So when you normally have your module, and then inside your modules, you have the plugin. I'm generating a module with the Drupal console for now. The module is called Drupal Camp. Um, uh, it lives on my custom folder. So it's nothing new. It's what you normally do every day. It's just I'm using the Drupal console helping me to generate the skeleton of my module. Module is done, the dot module file, the info YAML. Now I need the plugin type. And I say Drupal console, generate a plugin template. It's a plugin type that I want. And the type of this cover is annotation. This is Drupal console. It's nothing new. You go online and you check the documentation. I start asking, where do you want it? I just get the module, in Drupal Camp module, please. What's the type of your plugin? We said the plugin type is city widget. I call it city widget. Um, and then you say, what the machine name? This is to recognize like the service everywhere Drupal we know that my plugin is called city widget and everything is built for you. You have the, let me get to the next screen, which is easier. So we just use, can I go there? Yes, we just use these two commands. The first one is to generate the module, the other one is to generate the plugin type. And we have all these, uh, I, 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 I have the different um, module naming here just to, to relate to the project. Everything is done from Drupal console and by the Drupal console for us. We don't have to do anything. Everything is in, in there. We have the, we have the uh, manager, we have the interface, we have a base class our plugin should extend for facilitate our life. We have the annotation, we have even the interface the set of the um, uh, city widget plugin. We have the service as well. So everything is ready, we don't have to do anything. We have just to, as a developer, build our plugins. From this example, we have two plugins, which is the weather forecast and the list of restaurants. How do we do it at this point, right? So uh, a client came and said, probably we can do it with plugins. We use the Drupal console to generate our um, first skeleton, and then we start. The weather forecast. This is our plugin. Um, the plugin is made of a bit of annotation, which define our plugin in the lot, in the list. Our plugin is called the ID, which is really important, must be unique in your plugin lists plugins list. Uh, is weather forecast. It extends the city uh, um, widget base plugin. And basically, we use the interface method to build our output. What is saying this, for if anyone is not familiar with that, is use this tweak, let's, let's call it tweak file, and pass this file, this forecast information, and then we get the information for whatever our logic is. So this is our logic. It can be the logic inside our service. It can be the logic in here. What it's doing is basically connect to weather.com API and pull everything about the city that the user has, passing, has passed through the, through the form. That's it. We don't have to do anything else. Then we may do, you know, we can be, can be a, a bit of complexity on the team, on the styling. But I mean, it's 200 budget, so we can just output whatever is coming and a bit of sun and, and cloud, and that's it. The, um, oh, sorry, this is the file. So when we define what the, our plugins are, normally there is a folder structure that we have to respect. This one is going to live inside plugin city widgets. So if someone else is going to create another country module and um, they want to use your uh, plugins, they must live in this folder and they must have this annotation definition. And then they will be automatically discovered by Drupal. Um, restaurants, same thing. Basically, so again, our plugin definition top, the ID is restaurants in this case. You can use another team because uh, the output is different. We have maybe a service, maybe the logic in, in there to load the restaurants from the city. Uh, and then it's, the folder is, is, is the same. It's just, you know, it's side plugin city widget. Um, again, this one can uh, uh, hook Google API, places, filter by restaurant, and then the city. It's not that difficult. So uh, what I've done so far, is there a little bit of code? No, well, it's there, but 
um, it's 2, 4, 6, 10, let's say 15 line of codes, not counting the template, and you have Chip Advisor done. Um, and I say, brilliant, look, I've done it. I've done it in a day. You can do it a day. Again, the template probably could be a bit tricky, but it's not a big budget, so you can, you know, you can rely on, on reusable CSS framework or whatever it is. The project is done. You finish in a day, thanks to Plugin API, and then the client said, look, I had a brilliant idea. I found a lot of um, links where basically you can, just, you can just place the city at the end of the URL and they magically give us information. Can we use it on our widget, on our, on our website? You say, you, you are crazy. How can I implement all of them with 200 pounds um, budget? They say, look, I know, I know uh, Fussy, can, can we use iframe, right? So I want the, every time that I create like a, a node called URL, iframe, I just paste a label just to identify, and I paste the URL, and then you magically show on the list of the widget, you show iframes, where well, it's my URL plus the city from the user. They say, it can be done, but how many, how many plugins should I create? I mean, how, it isn't extendable. This is where, um, so iframes, this is where, I don't, I, can't, I don't know how to say things. This is where derivatives comes in help. So what it is, I, I won't say the name anymore, okay? So what that is, is, um, is you have a plugin, you still have a plugin, which is called the plugin, uh, the base plugin, uh, and, it lives, and it lives in its own thing, which is basically, it's a normal plugin, it's how you do the output of the plugin. In our case, the output of this iframe plugin is iframe, where the source is the URL passed uh, posted by the, the, the admin, the editor, and then the city coming from the user. So it's a simple iframe. And then the power of this is um, you can define a deriver. You see the definition of the plugin is different. Now there is a deriver class. And the deriver class defines the way we can create these dynamic new plugins, which is on the uh, right side. This is the deriver. It lives in a different folder because this is something that owns by Drupal, is inside plugin derivative and iframes. Um, so basically, what's happening is when the, when the discovery search for plugins, when it get to this plugin, I say, oh look, there is a derivative, so probably there are more plugins that I can load dynamically. So it goes to the other class, and the other class more or less says where here your logic to load dynamic URLs lives. It's basically what we do is, we create a node type called iframe with a title and a text field where the user can put the label and the text field, the URL, right? So in here, the logic is load all the content types iframe, gets the, um, do I get the name? Yeah, get the name, the title of the content type, and this will be the label of my plugin. Then get the URL, the text field, and this will be the base URL of my plugin. And so this will be a new definition of your plugin. It will be a new plugin available for you. So the more iframe content piece of nodes the uh, admin creates, the more plugin you will have available. So at this point, the client can do whatever, what's there in there? whatever he or she wants, whatever they want. They can create as many as they want as long as it follows this rule, this URL and the city, and they have it's a beautiful, well, it's not very beautiful, it's cheap advice or website. Um, so how do you use all this in block, right? So we have two widgets really styled in a nice way, and then we have all this beautiful list of iframes. How do you use it? So this is a, a controller um, for the root city slash city. So the way we do is, is we build a form that basically um, uh, send the user, the action is, um, go in this URL, which is city slash, uh, the city that the user add to the form, and then this is the controller. What it does is, we call our plugin manager, and the plugin manager says, okay, call the, call the um, discovery and find all the plugins. Then call the factory and build all of them, and for all of them, for each of them, you pass the city, you give me the widget, 
and then it will be the output on my page. That's it. So with the 20 line of code that we've done before, and I'm not counting the first and the one, and the three, with three, 23 lines of code, we have a website. We have a powerful website. It's a bit shit, but we have a powerful website. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Uh, nearly there, okay, nearly there. Um, as a, so do you get me so far, right? So uh, it's really difficult to explain plugin. If you go online and if you read for documentation, all of them are really good and really powerful, but you will find very weird examples. Um, I'm not blaming anyone. I read all of them and I loved all of them and I shared all of them, but some of them are about ice creams, some of them are about grocery shops, um, some of them were about a zoo, uh, oh, can I explain Drupal with zoos? I mean, it's, it's amazing, but um, because it's really difficult to, it's really difficult to give an example of plugins. With nodes, it's easy because it's the same model. With plugins, can be, it's just, that's why it's the same thing. It can be, it can be everything. It's what, it's what, it's your thing. It's what you decide. Just you have to get that is something that you decide, right? And then it can be implemented in a lot of ways, all the ways that you want, really. Um, I will give another example. This is a real example, and this is how I, I got into plugins. And this is why and when I started uh, loving plugins. All right, uh, so there was a, a oh, if, uh, by the way, if someone went to the session that I've done yesterday with Chatbot, it's the same slide, so feel excited anyway, okay? Don't say to the guys, you know, you know, I already saw this one, it's just shit. Um, so there was our, our client, which had a Drupal 8 website, uh, very happy, uh, brilliant website, and they said, look, because, you know, it's an event-based, we have a lot of events, um, it would be re useful if someone can connect the website through the uh, Alexa uh, Echo device. Can you, um, can you do it? Can you, will you expose our content through Alexa? And we did it, and we built a custom uh, module with our code logic uh, to connect to uh, Alexa. Right? And I said, yeah, and then when we were, this is, this is true, when we were ready like, to finish, and then Google did a huge, uh, whatever it's called, um, uh, event, event, of course, Google Home was out, and the client said, oh, look, are you there? Yeah, can you do the same for Google Home? Oh, we, did, we just did it for Alexa, it's a, you know, it's a different device. But it's not different, it's, 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 the, it's the same thing, right? It's, it's, uh, it's a conversational device, you, 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 you say something, in English, in a natural uh, language, and it replies with our website. Why is it different? It's the same thing. I say, yeah, it, it is, yeah. And then they say, oh, by the way, can you do the same for Facebook? Sure, okay, this is different, right? So this is conversational device with a microphone. Facebook is digital, it's online. And the client said, but it's the same, you know? It's, it's okay, there is, it's, it's, the command is by, by voice, but it's the same sentence. Uh, what's, what's, what's happening on uh, tomorrow in Camden Town, right? So it's the same thing. You type it or you say it, it's the same thing. And yeah, by the way, even on our website, can you put a chat? We said, right, it's the same thing in different ways, but it's the same thing that they want. So uh, in the chatbot com uh, conversation, this is called, so an, a command is called intent, right? So the user wants an intent and we have to build an output for this sense, so a response. The intent can come from different ways. It's like the, the migration source plugin type. The source can be different, but the output is the same. And that's why we built Chatbot API, which is basically, it has a lot of features inside that we can discuss and talk uh, after the session. But it's the, a, a lot of features, but the base is a plugin manager. So to build this, there was a bit of knowledge and learning, but to build this, it took me one day to implement with all of them by doing a plugin manager and a plugin type called Intent. And then I discovered that all of these platforms, uh, they work in the same way and they can be implemented really easy. All of them and many more. Yesterday I've done the, sessions, uh, the session and from the audience, I've been suggested of two more um, uh, chatbot uh, sources, let's call it, a right? way of using you know, these conversational devices. And I had a look, and it can be implemented with a line, line of code. So again, are you alive? Okay. Uh, again, so um, it's the same thing in different ways. Thank you.
Any question? Any doubt? Any anything? Don't be shy. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Maybe it's a little bit related to chatbots. Like recently, I met a met a friend, and he explained me what chatbots. What is really about the chatbots? Because recently they became very, very popular. What do you think, for example, in with Drupal? or maybe other platforms in business use, in business cases of use of chatbots. Is it something that developers should look into play with this, or is it something very specific to a um, big companies that they are interested in? So uh, if, if, I, if, I, if I give you my opinion, will be an opinionated answer. Um, I will give you a small one, and then I suggest to you, when the session I've done yesterday is online, I suggest you to have a look, because it does answer your question in a way that you will never imagine. Uh, the, the answer that I can give you, it depends by your project. So don't think that it's something that you can add, like, okay, we have a website, now we need a chatbot. It's not in this way. It's something that you have to plan. So it depends by the project. And the way you implement, and the uh, the source that you use, like Alexa or a chat on your website, it depends by your project. But the reason why you need it, the, I, again, that's the session that we had today. Don't feel that because the market is doing it, you have to do it. You have to be smart and you have to find the way of connecting to your um, website. I don't want to spoil anything. Watch the session. The way you connect to your website and why and how to launch it. So um, have a look. Uh, because yeah, uh, it's it's interesting the way that I I suggest in there. Thank you, Jessica. Do you want the question? Um, yes, maybe. Uh, what I mean, how common are up to now in the Drupal eight? Uh, the plugins. Many people using them. Is you you if you go if you go. Uh, no, it will take too long. Um, so uh, all the plugins, just for simplicity, they extend a class called plugin base. So if you see how many classes are extending plugin base, which will give you a good understanding of how many plugins we have just in core, you will be really surprised, which is a really long list. Everything is a plugin. The example that I've done, I've done with entity and plugin, it looks like a bit old, but I said the entity uh, the model with different data, right? Why? So it's like the butterfly origami made of different uh, papers. And the plugin is all the um, origami animals. Um, entity types are plugin. So the example is fit, right? So um, if entity types a plugin, an entity are the instances, let's say this plugin, not really, but let's say in this way. It's the same as the origami example. The, the plugin type is the origami animal, and the entity that we, that, we, that we create, the article that we create, the butterfly that we create with the red paper is the entity. So um, the plugin fit and entity types is a common one. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a lot of them. The use, the use components, the, use components um, the, 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 the style component, the filters, the sort by, the argument, the whatever you see on the view list, all of them are plugins. All of them are plugin types. And all the, all the, when you click, I want to add a new filter, you see the long list of filters, all of them are plugin types. All of them are plugin types. Uh, sorry, all of them are um, um, plugin um, instances of, a, of the same plugin type. And one example which is difficult to get about deriv the, I said I never said it, derivatives um, is, um, is, you know, when you create a view and then the, you want the view as a block, right? Or the exposed view as a block, right? Um, Blocks are plugins, but exposed filters of this view, they come from your configuration, your configuration of your website. So something you create on runtime, it doesn't exist on your file system, your code base. This is a derivative. So what the plugin manager does when the, the block plugin manager does when it creates the list of block plugin definitions, it loads all the ones in the code base, and then for example, ask a view of view. How many exposed filters how many views with exposed filter do you have? And you say, I get five. Okay, this is my list of block plus fives because they are coming from views. Everything, not everything is a plugin, but it's a massive list of plugins. And 
I didn't see any, any history of this. I think it's a Drupal thing, the plugin, but it's amazing what they do and what it does, and the simplicity, the power, the simplicity for, for, for um, on using them and the power that they give you. Does it answer your question? Well, it doesn't answer, but yeah. And thank you for the excellent uh, presentation. Ah, sorry, yeah, I get excited. Uh, I talk too much. Um, yes. Yeah. So the service, the service is, the service it's, um, it's a logic to do an action, right? So uh, if I want to, if I want to, if I want to walk to there, right? Uh, my brain needs to action the service legs, right, to move in there. And say, you call the service legs and say, the service legs, do this action, move from here to there, right? So this is the service. The plugin is something different. The plugin is, the plugin is a component. And with this component, you do something. So the service, let's say, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good example. So the service uh, makes uh, use of the components to do something, right? Like the service in this case, will be uh, the, the, the brain calling the um, legs plugins and say, now you move, right? Uh, but the service then the brain can say to the uh, arms plugins, and now you, you wave for, for any kind of reason just because they want to look me silly. So say, the plugins is the component that actually does something, but the action triggering and doing all the logic is the service. Right? Uh, you build, you build, um, the plugin manager, right? The plugin manager is the manager, so it's the one doing action. It's the, the manager is the one that manages something. That is a service. The plugin by itself is a piece of code doing something, whatever it is. Anything else? Well, I thought it was another announcement, yes. Um, if you use these as example, then yes. That's why it's very really difficult to understand plugins because, no, 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 no. Yeah, because because um, in your intention, which is helping on building something, then it's a plugin. But it doesn't. Mean, the plugin doesn't have to output HTML or build something. It can. It can do everything else. For example, the migration source. It does. It output data, which is. This is a, an array, the ID is five, the name is, it's a, it's, a, it's a record. So it's an helper if you need um, a helper, like outputting data, uh, um, in, in different ways, right? So in this way, it's a helper. It's something that helps you, that you can have different instances. So the same thing in your case would be a helper uh, processing something, and then Different ways is whatever you want to put it. So, if, if you use an example, yes, giving a, a right definition of plugins, a plugin API or plugins, I think it's impossible. One that fits everything, you say, "Wow, I got it just with one sentence." It's impossible. By examples is probably the best way. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, because um, so. Because the, it, it does, it does some, it's a helper, right? If you give the helper example, it does something. But because it's the same thing, they always, they, they all have to, um, have to, um, uh, they have to follow a rule, right? All, your, your plugin is an object, and all the plugins, they have to follow a rule. The only, the only way, I would say, the only reliable way in PHP and object-oriented programming to, to define rule for classes is using an interface. Your interface should be the definition of your plugin. Then the plugin can implement whatever you want as long as the interface is respected. For example, the example that I gave with the city widget, the only uh, requirement was I must be, have a build widget method and a pass a city. That's it. And then this is the interface, and then you can apply whatever you want in your logic as long as this is respected. 
Does he answer your question? Yes. They have to do it in a certain way. If they extend it, if they just create a plugin, they have to follow your way. You don't, you don't, you are not, you're not forced to create an interface, but the right way of, of doing it is, is defining an interface. And then, of course, not all the developers, they can follow the rule. They cannot just extend in, implement the interface, but they should because it's there. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a way to make sure that you don't make mistakes, basically. And in the future, it's a way to, um, for example, when you, when you add a new functionality, you first add to the interface, so all the other plugins, they will fail because of them respect the new rule. While if you don't implement an interface, everybody can do the fact they want. Any, any, more, any more question? Did you like it? Just say, yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so thank you.
Ministerstwo Zdrowia nie uwzględnia nie uwzględniła Mobile Phone. Yes. But the, I do see some similarities between the plugin and the app. No, no. I, I um, some use of the, yeah. Again, no. Y yeah, it's I know totally what it is. Completely different it's completely different. Apps. Plugin is just a name that has been given because you can plug it in different yeah. ways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's something completely different. And you the whole question is not in the Google Play Store. It's, it's, it's not. It's just in Drupal 8. Yes, because yeah, you need. Uh, yeah, 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 like yeah, this. Um, because you need this. It's an object-oriented programming uh, way of 